Around 74,000 years ago, the Earth was beginning to emerge from one of its recent ice ages. While the ice reshaped much of the planet, the climates remain mostly steady in the tropical regions. A wide range of late ice age mammals inhabited the world, including the megafauna and some apex predators up in the cold regions of Eurasia. At this point, humans had spread across many parts of the old world although they had not yet reached Australia or the Americas. Most of the human population consisted of archaic Homo sapiens, who had first appeared in southern Africa about 300,000 years ago. By 74,000 years ago, these early humans had moved out of Africa and settled in much of Asia as well as parts of southeastern Europe. However, Europe was still dominated by another human species, the Neanderthals, who had adapted to life on the fringes of the northern ice sheets. Unlike Homo sapiens, Neanderthals were specifically adapted to conserve heat in cold climates. Denisovans, another early human species, was leaving its mark on the higher altitudes in Asia. Far to the east, early humans had spread throughout South and Southeast Asia. On the islands of Southeast Asia, including what is now Indonesia and the Philippines, Homo erectus had likely evolved into smaller species, such as Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonensis. These hobbits stood at just over three feet tall, shorter than any modern adult pygmies. As humans journeyed from Africa to settle in distant corners of the earth, they encountered a massive catastrophe, the eruption of Mount Toba, which drastically altered the ecological landscape of the time. Many scientists believe that this massive volcanic eruption caused a crash in the human population, referred to as the genetic bottleneck in the human population. A genetic bottleneck occurs when a population's size is dramatically reduced, typically due to a catastrophic event. This sh sharp decrease in population leads to a loss of genetic diversity. When the species recover from such an event, it does so from a small number of survivors, resulting in future populations having reduced genetic variability. Um, additionally, Genes that were once rare in the species may become more common due to the limited genetic pool of the survivors. Over millions of years of Earth's history, volcanic activity has shaped its climate and evolution. Major volcanic eruptions during the last three million years have caused sharp drops in temperatures. These conclusions came from analyzing fossils found in deep sea cores. During these cooler periods, drought-resistant plants expanded showing significant changes in rainfall patterns. In the 1980s, fears of nuclear war between the USA and USSR led scientists to study nuclear winter, the potential global cooling effect of nuclear explosions. These studies revealed that a nuclear war could cause widespread famine due to massive crop failures. The climate models developed for nuclear winter studies were later applied to understanding large volcanic eruptions, like the massive Toba eruption 74,000 years ago. Researchers also examined historic eruptions like Krakatau, Tambora, and Pinatubo, which caused brief cooling effects lasting about a year or two. The Southeast Asia constitutes a volcanic island chain, which includes Sumatra, Java, and many smaller islands in the Malay archipelago. The islands are all formed from volcanoes, both active and ancient, and their dense tropical jungles are nourished by the rich volcanic soil, often making it difficult to recognize the presence of volcanoes beneath the lush vegetation. The Toba volcano, located in northern Sumatra, sits in an area with frequent earthquakes and volcanic activity. This is because it is near the Java subduction trench, where the Indo-Australian plate and the Sunda plate meet and push against each other. 
Toba is the largest volcanic crater or caldera from the last 2.6 million years, measuring about 100 kilometers long and 30 kilometers wide. Toba lies where two major geological fault lines, the Sumatran Fault and the Investigator Fracture Zone, meet, making the area highly unstable. Toba has erupted four times in the last million years. Its most powerful eruption about 74,000 years ago created the current caldera and deposited a thick volcanic layer called Yungus Toba Tuff, over 20,000 square kilometers, with ash spreading globally. The caldera is still uplifting, a process that may continue for hundreds of thousands of years before the next major eruption. Scientists have studied the ash from the massive Toba eruption, known as the youngest Toba Tuff, using marine sediment cores, which are layers of mud and sand collected from the ocean floor that preserve Earth's history. Over 30 years ago, researchers found a widespread ash layer in cores from the Northeast Indian Ocean and Bay of Bengal. Research confirmed it came from Toba Volcano, around 75,000 years old. This eruption coincided with a global climate shift from a warm interglacial to a colder glacial period. Later studies expanded the known range of Yungus Toba Tuff. The ash from Toba covered an area exceeding 10 million square kilometers, reaching as far as the Indian Ocean and South China Sea. The eruption was massive with an ash volume of 20,000 square kilometers the ashes spread indicates winds carried it both westward and eastward during the eruption, which lasted about 9 to 14 days, and reached heights of at least 45 kilometers. In some ocean sediment cores, the ash layer is associated with a sharp cooling event confirmed by comparisons with Greenland ice core data. However, not all records show a clear temperature drop possibly because the cooling was brief and difficult to detect in sediment layers that accumulate slowly. This underscores the complexity of reconstructing ancient climate impacts. The Toba eruption left volcanic ash, the youngest Toba Tuff, across large parts of Asia. This ash was first noted on land in 1930 in Malaysia, where a thick layer covered older sand and gravel containing ancient stone tools. Chemical tests confirmed this ash came from Toba. Similar thick ash deposits were also found in Borneo, though their chemistry hasn't been analyzed yet. In India, volcanic ash linked to Toba was first found in the Sun Valley. Over time, researchers identified youngest Toba tuff in many parts of the Indian subcontinent using advanced chemical analysis to confirm its origin. These studies also examined older Toba eruptions like the Middle Toba Tuff and Oldest Toba Tuff to distinguish them from the Youngest Toba Tuff. The Youngest Toba Tuff ash likely covered much of India soon after the eruption, forming a layer about 10 to 15 centimeters thick. However, natural erosion from rain and flowing water quickly removed much of this ash from hills and concentrated it in valleys, lakes, and rivers. This process is similar to what happened after the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption in the U.S., where most ash was washed away within a few years. Scientists also debated the presence of older Toba ash in India. Some studies suggested it might exist in ancient deposits with early human tools, but this remains uncertain due to the reworking of the ash and tools over time. To confirm the origins of any Toba ash, researchers need precise chemical and dating methods. The youngest Toba Tuff eruption occurred approximately 74,000 years ago, as confirmed by advanced dating techniques. This eruption ranks as one of Earth's largest known volcanic events with a volcanic explosivity index of 8, categorizing it as a super-eruption. 
the eruption expelled approximately 2,800 cubic kilometers of volcanic material, far exceeding the output of historical eruptions like Tambora of 1815 and Krakatau of 1883. The environmental impact of the youngest Toba Tuff eruption was profound. It released massive amounts of sulfur, forming sulfuric acid aerosols that temporarily blocked sunlight. Estimates of sulfur released vary significantly, from 3.5 trillion to 330 trillion grams, but even the lower estimates imply considerable atmospheric disturbance. This reduction in sunlight could have ranged from conditions resembling an overcast day to levels barely sufficient for photosynthesis. These effects may have caused short-term global cooling, though the precise extent remains uncertain due to conflicting data. Volcanic eruptions, like the massive Toba supereruption, can have dramatic effects on the climate, both globally and locally. After an eruption, the release of sulfur into the atmosphere forms tiny droplets of sulfuric acid. These droplets act like mirrors, reflecting sunlight away from the Earth and causing a rapid cooling effect within a few months. Even smaller eruptions with high sulfur levels can cool the planet more than bigger eruptions with less sulfur. Scientists measure the impact of eruptions with something called the Dust Veil Index, or DVI which shows how much volcanic dust is in the air and how long it stays. The Toba eruption had a DVI of about 3 lakh, which is thousands of times greater than the Krakatau eruption of 1883. This means Toba's effects on temperatures and weather patterns were far more intense and lasted longer. While fine ash particles from Toba could have stayed in the air for years, larger ash particles fell back to the ground quickly reducing some of the long-term impacts. One of the major ways volcanic eruptions affect the planet is by changing rainfall patterns. Volcanic dust has been linked to severe droughts, like those in Asia during the 17th and 18th centuries. Cooling caused by eruptions can weaken key weather systems, such as the Asian monsoon, leading to less rain and longer droughts. Cooler ocean surfaces after such eruptions can also cause less rainfall, and these effects can last for decades. Locally, volcanic ash can cause many problems. It can create a temporary condition called mock aridity, where plants struggle to grow because the ash blocks water from soaking into the soil, even in humid climates. The ash can also make soil and water more acidic, harming plants and animals for thousands of years. By reflecting sunlight, ash deposits temporarily cool the land and reduce rainfall, although this usually lasts only a few years. The Toba eruption is often compared to the idea of a nuclear winter, where ash and debris block sunlight, causing extreme global cooling. It likely played a role in ongoing climate shifts at the time, including colder temperatures, growing ice sheets, and falling sea levels. Uh, some scientists believe Toba may have sped up the start of the last ice age, though others argue the cooling had already begun before the eruption. Toba's eruption may have cooled the northern hemisphere by about 3 degrees for several years, with some areas experiencing even more extreme drops. For example, summer temperatures in parts of Canada could have been 10 to 15 degrees lower for two or three years. Ice cores from places like Greenland show evidence of volcanic fallout, including a spike in sulfur that lasted 6 to 7.5 years, as well as colder conditions and increased dust levels. However, it's now believed the glaciation that followed was already underway before Toba erupted. The eruption also had far-reaching effects on ecosystems and early human populations, the extreme cooling and changes in weather would have devastated plants and crops, likely leading to widespread famine. Some researchers think this may have caused a sharp decline in early human numbers, contributing to a genetic bottleneck. Recent research confirms that Toba eruption had varying impacts on climate across different regions. In Africa and India, the cooling effect was less severe, 
with temperatures dropping by no more than 4 degrees. This milder cooling allowed human populations to continue their activities, challenging the idea of a catastrophic bottleneck. Rainfall decreased, but conditions remained mild in southern Africa, with no extreme freezing temperatures. Southern India saw forests persist longer than northern India, where cooler temperatures led to a shift from forests to grasslands. In Europe and Asia, the cooling was much more pronounced, with temperature drops reaching up to 10 degrees centigrade. These severe conditions likely contributed to the decline of Neanderthals in Europe and other early human species in Asia, as ecosystems became harsher and food sources more scarce. The cooling in these regions was significantly more disruptive than in Africa and India. The Southern Hemisphere experienced weaker cooling due to volcanic particles being concentrated in the Northern Hemisphere. Oceans also helped moderate the climate, preventing drastic temperature drops. This led to more stable conditions compared to the Northern Hemisphere. The Toba Catastrophe Model demonstrates a remarkable convergence of evidence from various scientific fields, uniting findings about volcanic events and human population history. Independent research into mitochondrial DNA from diverse human populations revealed signs of a significant population bottleneck around 70,000 years ago, followed by a rapid population expansion approximately 50,000 years ago. Subsequent reviews connected this genetic bottleneck to the Toba eruption, suggesting that the massive volcanic event may have played a key role in shaping the early history and recovery of modern human populations. In the context of human fossils, the bottleneck aligns with a weak Garden of Eden model of human evolution. This model suggests that modern humans originated in Africa, with groups migrating out at various times. The earliest migrant, Homo erectus, left Africa about 1.8 million years ago, reaching China and Java by 7,80,000 years ago, before disappearing around 70,000 years ago. Another archaic human relative, Homo heidelbergensis, emerged in Europe around 6 lakh years ago and disappeared approximately 3 lakh years ago. The fossil data indicates that the modern human lineage emerged in Africa around 3 lakh years ago. The African origin of modern humans during the Middle Pleistocene is supported by archaeological, fossil, and genetic evidences. Sites like Jebel Irhud, Omo, and Herto provide insights into early modern Homo sapiens in Africa around 3 lakh years ago, displaying a mix of archaic and modern traits. These fossils represent transitional stages from archaic to modern Homo sapiens. During the Middle Pleistocene, early modern humans had a wide distribution across Africa supporting the concept of African multi-regionalism. Fossils from different regions and within the same area show diverse combinations of archaic and modern traits, indicating separate evolutionary paths. Fluctuating gene flow among small nomadic foraging groups contributed to this diversity, while the prevailing model suggests a rapid single-wave dispersal out of Africa. Recent research proposes a more complex scenario. After their origin around 3 lakh years ago, several bands of humans made attempts to move out of Africa, but got fully successful only after 50 to 45,000 years ago. Before that, they were primarily restricted to Africa and neighboring parts of Southwest Asia, like Levant. Outside of Africa, modern Homo sapien burials have been uncovered at the sites of Skul and Kafse in Israel, dated to between 90 to 130,000 years old, respectively. 
Similarly, the site of Jebel Faya in the United Arab Emirates contained tools that indicate Homo sapiens may have migrated here as early as 1 lakh 30 years ago too. About 600 kilometers away from Mount Carmel, a fossil from Al Wasta in Saudi Arabia, represented by a single finger bone, overlaps with the time range of the school and Kafse fossils. Additionally, stone tools found throughout the Arabian Peninsula indicate human presence, although skeletal remains are scarce. After expanding out of Africa, modern Homo sapiens likely used two connections to the West Asia, one through the Sinai Peninsula to the Levant, Eastern Mediterranean, and another through the Southern Arabian Peninsula via the Straits of Bab el-Mandeb. Modern humans could have thrived along the southern coast of the Arabian Peninsula, utilizing resources and establishing routes towards South Asia. The fate of modern humans in the Levant after 90,000 years ago remains uncertain. Modern humans did not appear in the region until 45,000 years ago, and it is speculated that competition with Neanderthals may have played a role in the disappearance of modern human occupation. The Toba volcanic eruption is believed to have caused temporary cooling in potentially disrupted ecosystems, which could have indirectly influenced human populations. The main debate about the origins and migrations of modern humans centers on whether they migrated out of Africa into Asia before or after the Toba eruption. If humans reached Asia before the eruption, they likely were not the ancestors of modern humans, as they predate the bottleneck and disappeared, with post-Toba populations repopulating the world. Many researchers argue that humans spread to Eurasia only after the eruption, aligning with both archaeological evidence and genetic data. However, some archaeological sites in Asia claim to be over 75,000 years old, though their dating and connection to modern humans remain uncertain. Genetic studies, including those of mitochondrial and nuclear DNA, support the replacement hypothesis. These studies suggest that humans did indeed originate in Africa and then spread to other parts of the world around one lakh years ago. The bottleneck during the time made it unlikely for humans to have evolved gradually in different regions, as suggested the multi-regional theory. Additionally, the African human population is the genetically most diverse human population. Almost all present-day human genomic diversity can be traced to African populations. If humans had evolved separately in different regions, we would expect some unique genetic traits in these populations, but no such traits have been found. Between 6 lakh to 3 lakh years ago, the human population grew rapidly, especially in Africa, likely due to advancements in technology that allowed for better survival and resource use, leading to higher population densities. This growth and spread of humans from Africa supports the idea that modern humans replaced earlier populations. The timeline for the shift to modern human behavior is becoming clearer. Early signs of the later Stone Age are found in Kenya and Tanzania, dating back over 50,000 years. In places like Israel, the Sinai Peninsula and Europe, the transition from the Middle Paleolithic to the Upper Paleolithic occurred around 46 to 42,000 years ago. This pattern supports the idea that modern humans and their technology originated in East Africa. However, it's unclear whether this cultural leap was directly linked to a population recovery after a genetic bottleneck. The timing of this bottleneck event in Africa is still debated. Typically, populations that survive bottlenecks have less genetic diversity, but Africa, being a large landmass, should have had the most diversity after the bottleneck. Studies show that Africa has about three times more genetic diversity than other regions. This raises the question of what caused these bottlenecks and why modern humans expanded afterwards. 
Toba super eruption is considered one possibility, which occurred around the same time as the bottleneck. The Toba super eruption was initially believed to have caused the extinction of hominins outside Africa, leaving only equatorial African populations to recolonize the rest of the world. This idea aligned with the out of Africa model, suggesting a replacement of global populations with modern humans originating from Africa after the eruption. Archaeological findings contradict the hypothesis of widespread extinction. In Sumatra and Malaysia, stone tools dated to the time of the eruption suggest local human survival. Similarly, in India's Jururu and San river valleys, Middle Paleolithic tools before and after the eruption show continuity in human activity. China also exhibits uninterrupted cultural and technological traditions, with no evidence of a population hiatus due to Toba. Discoveries like modern human teeth in Fuyan Cave, China, dating 120 to 80,000 years ago, demonstrate that modern humans were already present in Asia before the eruption. This undermines claims that post-Toba migrants from Africa replaced existing populations. Archaic hominins such as Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo floresiensis, and Homo luzonensis survived across Eurasia during the same period, even in regions near the Toba crater. Their continued existence further refutes the notion of complete extinction caused by the eruption. As geologists refined the Toba eruption model and geneticists examined the timing of genetic changes in humans, additional evidence of population bottlenecks emerged from diverse sources, strengthening the case for a global impact. Research on various species revealed similar patterns of population reduction and recovery around the time of the Toba eruption. In 2004, DNA analysis of tiger subspecies showed a severe bottleneck about 72,000 years ago, aligning with human timelines. Further studies in 2014 revealed widespread bottlenecks in Southeast Asian cat populations, including cheetahs, around the same period. Similarly, DNA sequencing of giant pandas in 2012 found evidence of significant population fluctuations, with a major bottleneck occurring before 50,000 years ago. Primate studies echoed these findings. Orangutans experienced a bottleneck and subsequent expansion around 64,000 years ago, while macaques in South Asia faced a bottleneck coinciding with or shortly after the Toba event. Even in Africa, Gorillas and chimpanzees showed signs of population crashes around 70,000 years ago, with gorilla populations estimated to have dropped to about 29,000 mated pairs. Surprisingly, even bacteria reveal clues to this ancient event. Helicobacter pylori, a gut bacterium found in over half of humans, traces its spread from African ancestors to Eurasian populations to before 58,000 years ago, just after the Toba eruption and human population expansion. These patterns are consistent across many sequenced genomes of organisms with Eurasian ancestors from 70,000 years ago, showing bottlenecks followed by population recoveries about 50,000 years ago. While most research focuses on prominent species, untapped genomes may hold further surprises offering even more insights into the far-reaching impacts of the Toba eruption. Analysis of eastern chimpanzees' mitochondrial DNA shows a population decline around the same time as humans, suggesting a global environmental catastrophe likely triggered by Toba's eruption. Some chimpanzee populations, in particular areas of Uganda and Zaire, went through a bottleneck around 67,000 years ago. Other populations in more exposed areas may have been affected by climate changes during the last glacial maximum about 20,000 years ago. Volcanic eruptions rich in sulfur can cause global cooling, but Toba's eruption was different. While eruptions like Toba's are explosive, they emit fewer sulfur aerosols, making their cooling effects less immediate, but potentially longer lasting. Climate models and ice core data suggest that Toba's eruption caused rapid cooling 
over the first few years, followed by a cooling period lasting decades and even centuries. This cooling could have led to reduced precipitation and affected ecosystems globally. In Southern Africa, there is no evidence of disruption in human activity during or after the eruption. Similarly, terrestrial mammals in Southeast Asia, including humans, appear to have endured the environmental effects with limited impact, showing resilience against the Tobo event. The Toba super eruption's climatic impact was significantly influenced by the type and quantity of sulfur aerosols released. Research indicates that the eruption might have produced smaller aerosol particles or released a lower amount of sulfuric acid aerosols, which could have limited the magnitude of cooling. This would result in a milder volcanic winter comparable to modern eruptions such as Mount Pinatubo, where cooling effects were temporary and not as extreme. Water vapor emissions during the eruption were crucial in mitigating its impact. Water vapor is far more abundant in volcanic gases than sulfur dioxide and has a warming effect on the atmosphere. By increasing global warming, water vapor could have counterbalanced the cooling effects of volcanic aerosols, leading to a less severe climatic disruption. Simulations that incorporate water vapor emissions show limited environmental impacts further supporting this view. Solar insulation, Earth's principal energy source, was higher around 74,000 years ago than today due to orbital configurations. These conditions allowed for faster recovery from the cooling period. Additionally, orbital factors created seasonal patterns that could have facilitated human survival, such as colder springs, warmer autumns, and less extreme temperature differences between summer and winter. The volcanic eruption likely caused immediate northern hemisphere summer cooling, but simultaneous winter warming. This would have minimized global temperature drops in the initial years after the eruption. Such seasonal adjustments could have enabled ancient humans to adapt to the changing climate or migrate to less affected regions, enhancing their chances of survival. The Toba super eruption caused significant destruction to local environments and influenced global weather patterns. However, high-resolution geological records suggest that the climate and ecosystems recovered within a few years, avoiding long-term global devastation. Archaeological evidence shows continuous human activity before and after the eruption, even in heavily ash-affected regions like India and Sumatra highlighting ancient humans' adaptability to environmental changes. Genetic analyses of archaic humans, such as Neanderthals, Denisovans, and species like Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonensis, further confirm their survival during and after the Toba event. This evidence challenges the hypothesis that the eruption caused widespread human extinction and a severe population bottleneck. While the idea of Toba's catastrophic global impact offers a simplistic explanation for complex phenomena, it ignores critical factors in Earth's systems and human adaptability. Current data demonstrate that the influence of the Toba eruption on global climate, ecosystems, and ancient human populations was significantly overestimated. It is now necessary to adopt a more nuanced and evidence-based perspective on paleoclimatic changes and human evolution, moving beyond outdated, catastrophic interpretations.